share with you my in- full interview with Mr. Yogi Pranik, who is an Indian-born uh, Japanese politician. Uh, his story from growing up in a small town in India, learning the Japanese language, getting really, really good at it, and eventually getting into living in Japan, being a professional in IT, and then how he entered Japanese political life. Uh, now he's the principal, uh, he's the first uh, foreign-born uh, principal of a Japanese high school in Edegawaku, so that is an achievement in and of itself. So there's a lot more to his story, there's a lot more to his future. Stick around and uh, listen to the full interview. Hello, Yogi-san. Hi. Well, thank you so much for joining. Um, you know, I, I, we are connected on LinkedIn, and uh, I watch your posts. At first, I was just aware of your presence by your posts on LinkedIn. And then I started looking into your story and uh, learning more about you. And uh, uh, the more I learned, the more I'm fascinated with your life story. And I want to uh, just share that story with my followers on uh, TikTok and, uh, and YouTube. Um, so, so uh, I like, thank you so much. I'm really privileged to hear that. Uh, yeah. I honestly post a very little on LinkedIn. Yes. Uh, I recently started posting mm-hmm. and, uh, honestly, it's, it's so difficult to find time to actually post. Right. <laughs> so yeah. Sometimes like I'm just posting for two weeks or three weeks kind of, or otherwise I'm not yeah. able to post. <laughs> Yeah, it it certainly takes a lot of time. Uh, not just only not only posting, but you know, editing content and then responding to people's questions in the comments, which is always nice to do. So it takes a lot of uh, time and effort uh, during the day. That's for sure. <laughs> it does. It does really, really, because uh, at least at least a dozen people every day write to me. Yogi San, can you help personal o- right. on the groups? On the groups, it's all uh, again a different flow. But uh, on personal side, people like at least a dozen people will send me messages. Mm. Yogi San, please fit this. One yeah. or one or like uh, at roughly five, six of them in a week are kind of critical, and they they really need some mm. urgent help, kind of. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I- so uh, and, and recently these police cases and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, domestic violence cases these are there so much so many so mm-hmm. many of them one yeah. police case takes uh, take hours and hours of effort one right. domestic violence case at least the first hearing takes 4 hours wow. <laughs> listening to both the husband and the yeah. wife and mm-hmm. it at least takes 4 hours for the first hearing and then it goes on into the loop because they don't want to listen <laughs> right yeah it's uh yeah, the the uh, the justice system and the court system is something that I'm also quite interested in um, the differences and uh, the weaknesses, or even some strengths of the Japanese system compared to. I'm I'm from Canada, so there are different systems, but uh, I've seen a lot of uh, foreigners, especially misunderstanding the process and getting caught up in the system. Uh, needlessly because of a lack of information or cultural awareness so exactly. uh, that's one of one of my uh, goals as well in my channel i talk about that as well amazing amazing so ha- have you have you met uh, john hayes who is a uh, uh, assemblyman in in sukuba no i, I haven't met john so we no, could, i haven't uh, right now we are five of, like uh, we are just five of us live in Japan, kind of who mm-hmm. have who are foreign origin and assemblyman in Japan. So mm-hmm. John Hayes is my senpai to us. Okay. I think he right now in fourth term of his councillorship uh, wow. in Kuba City. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, he he's not like so much going out and uh, posting so much on LinkedIn or Facebook, kind of. Yeah, he 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 keeps himself to the local area. Uh, sure. I think he will be running for the uh, state elections, the prefecture elections, mm-hmm. uh, this, this November. So wow. what I'll do okay. is after this, I'll also connect you to him. Yes. And because yeah, I think uh, since elections are also nearby, uh, there will be a different heat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> for both of you, kind of, it will be yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's important. I mean, of course, as you know. Uh, I'm not sure about India, but in Canada, there are a lot of uh, new immigrants to the country that contribute a lot to Canadian society. 
And, yeah. uh, you know, we look at it as a positive thing to get influence and ideas from other countries. And I think exactly. that's, uh, it's taking a long time in Japan for, for this uh, to uh, become a reality. But I think, you know, the pioneers like yourself, and uh, I forget the name now, but there was a Dutch uh, politician in the 80s and 90s, I forget his name, uh, that Suruden Martin. Suruden Martin. Yes, yes. yes. And, uh, <laughs> I'm getting educated as well because I, I posted mm -hmm. uh, to my followers that I'm, I'm going to be speaking with one of the first, um, you know, foreign born assemblymen in Japanese history. And people were commenting, oh, actually, in there, do you know this person? Do you know that person? So yeah. I'm learning yeah. uh, about that as well. So, yeah, Surinian Martin is a big name because the uh, first thing is he comes uh, uh, from a country where actually uh, uh, Japan has a lot of, like Japanese give a lot of respect kind of it. If you are coming from the US or the Europe, the, the focus, yeah. the attention will be different. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, another thing is Surinian uh, uh, son, like, uh, I think he was in education and uh, he wrote a book on agriculture and other stuff as well, yeah, uh, which was uh, quite well picked up. So he he presented some ideas, but ultimately, you know, he couldn't change much. He couldn't yeah. change much. So mm -hmm. people like him, people like me, uh, I very clearly say out, like even if I do politics for 20 years, we'll be just mascots. Yes. Uh, we are not sure we'll be really be able to make uh, real big changes. Mm -hmm. uh, I really want to mold myself to uh, to go into bigger politics. Yeah. Uh, I want to mold myself. Honestly, I don't think I'm there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and last election was, uh, I can say that there's a part of luck to it. Uh, yeah. Definitely, I've been doing a lot of social work. Like, um, unlike some other politicians, uh, uh, I should not compare, but I think I have done real groundwork. So yeah. from uh, if you see people from the non-Japanese background in Indian poli in Japanese politics, mm -hmm. uh, and Martin San is there. Then one more guy in uh, Shizuoka, he is now the uh, he is the chairman chair 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 person like what you say, the person in chair for one of the assemblies local assemblies. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not getting his name. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell yeah. you. Uh, uh, and then there is another. There, there is a lady in uh, in uh, Sumidaku. Mm -hmm. uh, she is from the from a Bolivian background. And okay. Then, yeah. And then uh, John Hayes in in Scuba. And right. He recently one uh, uh, Middle East background guy got elected in uh, Yamagata Prefecture. Really. Very okay. recently. Uh, mm. It's it's a it's a town council, so mm -hmm. a, a bit more smaller unit kind of. Yeah, if you go into the background of all of us. I mm. think, uh, again, like, um, I don't want to like show somebody bigger or smaller, but sure, I, I, I think like my background comes from a much more deeper work in the society, and yeah. uh, hence, uh, I can, I, I probably I'm the only person in all these five people who, who, who's who actually talks about the immigrant society. Mm -hmm. And uh, how the gap between the immigrant society and the Japanese society can be filled up, and, yeah. and I further go into detail what what should be the role of an individual immigrant, yeah. mm -hmm. individual Japanese, uh, then right. the local administration, and mm -hmm. then the central government. Uh, right. They they all have have to play their own roles, uh, mm -hmm. and unless all of them play their own role all these stakeholders don't play their role uh, yeah i think the uh the the society as a whole is not going to go to the next stage mm. and uh, mm. i think pe pe people have a, like a kind of a farce uh understanding like the uh the acceptance of immigrants is mm -hmm. going so nice in some other parts of the world say germany right or after this Ukrainian war, people talk about Poland and Hungary. But, yeah. you know, the, these people who talk about, give these examples, they are not on the ground. They don't understand right. that actually the immigrant yeah. society has not evolved so much. That's and right. the problem yeah. still go on. So mm -hmm. people keep looking. In fact, they don't even look into the details of the model. 
and they say oh that immigrant thing is going on great in germany then immigrant thing is going on great in australia right uh, some bits and pieces are going good but mm. as a whole uh, the model is not successful in fact i feel germany is one failure model because mm. just accepting the refugees in a large number uh, it's going to just create your good image but it's going to create certain problems within the country yeah. You know, That's if you right, are yeah. accepting, enough of the local people are not going to be happy about it. Mm. So anyway, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, my uh, <laughs> my sister is a high school teacher in Canada, and uh, yeah. a few, I think it was about five years ago or six years ago, where the Syrian Canadians uh, took in a lot of Syrian refugees from Syria, and a lot of yeah. these uh, families came and they lived with a Canadian family for the first uh, six months or so, and then the Canadian government supported them to get their own home and uh, get jobs. But yeah. one of the problems was there was perhaps too many, too many immigrants in a small town of my sister's small town. And in that high school, there were about 20 um, teenagers. Three or four of them were really happy. Uh, you know, they couldn't speak English well, but they were really uh, adjusting well and having a great time, but probably more than half, were depressed and uh, they put their head down on the desk and wouldn't talk to anyone and couldn't understand English and didn't have enough, uh, you know, support. So perhaps that was a little bit too aggressive in receiving too many uh, immigrants at the same time with zero uh, language ability and zero cultural awareness, uh, exactly. being tra traumatically relocated from a war zone into like a peaceful <laughs> country. Exactly. It must have been very difficult for them. So. Uh, there's two extremes, but I, I think language, education, getting acquainted with the weather conditions, mm -hmm. the food, yeah, and the biggest factor is the religion. Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, people don't understand uh, mm. how big that religious factor uh, mm. actually affects people. It it affects yeah. both the sides, mm. both the sides. And mm. trust me, recently in Japan, I'm seeing like. The religion is bursting here. People, mm -hmm. immigrant people, people are going into religion. Some people, they have realized uh, that uh, opening up temples, opening up places of worship is a wonderful model to get people into one place and yeah. also make some money and also mm -hmm. make some say, fame. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I believe that it's going into a very wrong direction. Mm. It's going into a very wrong direction. In fact, uh, in, in Hokkaido, in one of the towns, uh, there are now around 400, 500 people are there. They are basically horse trainers, the race mm -hmm. course horse trainers. Yeah. And the, the city office person from there, he called me and he said, Yogi-san, you have a temple. Uh, we have seen it in the in the on the internet and it's really beautiful and we want to build a temple like that for the people here from India. Mm -hmm. I said, let me first correct you. Uh, I don't run a temple. I run a culture center. <laughs> right. Maybe yeah. it looks like a temple, but I run a culture center. I don't run a temple. Yeah. Uh, uh, and honestly, if if somebody is eligible to run a temple, then I am the one to do it because I am from that background. My surname itself is one from that kind of background in India. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have learned Indian scripts and the old mantras and all so many in my childhood that mm -hmm. I can do that, but still I don't do that because, you know, uh, religious factors, people can keep just to their homes. Yeah. And those, those don't need to come out to the streets. Sure. And if and at least the city office shouldn't be putting their investments or their interest mm -hmm. in, into setting up these kind of outfits. If you right. want to give something to the people, make a culture center. I see. You created a place of exchange for cultures, not just Indian. But right. all the people who can, who are there, different nationalities, they can come into that place. Maybe they can de decorate some of their things from their own countries. You can create a space, this space mm. for India, this space for Pakistan, maybe for Canada, maybe right. for the US. Give them space. Put put their ethnic clothes, uh, some ethnic things. You mm. can put there and let people come there. Let Japanese also come there to enjoy the culture. Sure. Uh, why why to make a temple? So right. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't contact me for the second time. <laughs> you know, because I wonder I, if I could, if I could uh, s switch a little bit and and ask you 
one of the parts of your life story that fascinated me sure. and that I'm sure. still yes. curious about was your early education and in your hometown in India yeah. and your, your what your interest in Japanese language. I from what I gathered from you know reading about you and and watching some videos about you was that somehow your parents entered you into a certain school that had an option to study Japanese and you excelled in that language but what what was the how did you get into that school what what was the origin story of your interest in Japanese language and culture oh great sure sure actually it's my father who realized that uh, I'm good at languages. Really? Okay. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So at, at school, like uh, I was not like somebody who would come back home and keep on studying and studying and studying and kind of. Yeah. But uh, still my scores in the school were good. And particularly in language, it was my scores were very good. And yeah. my father realized it, that I have a knack for languages. So, in, so in what my, were you studying? E English, of course, and and we're in the early yeah. days, elementary school. What what languages did you study? Uh, okay, I was in the national school. Uh, the yeah. so uh, in national schools we normally study uh, three languages, yeah. which is the uh, English, and then he, Hindi. Yes, and then uh, Indian old language called Sanskrit. Sanskrit, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when mm -hmm. we go to the middle school we have to also learn the language of the local area so right. uh, uh, i learned uh, the local area language marathi which is also okay. my mother tongue so uh, okay. uh, in in india normally people learn three to four languages uh, mm. at, the, at the school level mm. so mm. Uh, uh, in in middle school uh, there was uh, like a series of articles happening on spanish language in the local newspaper so mm -hmm. i started learning spanish from there Okay. And I actually became a very good, good speaker of Spanish. It's long back. Now I, I don't speak. Right. And when I went to high school, uh, I had an uh, option to study German language. So I I, I learned German. And yeah. uh, when I was going to the university, my father was expecting that uh, I should either go to the, the army or I should go to the engineering college. Uh, okay. But uh, I I didn't choose either. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, because of certain reasons, there's a story. I chose to study physics and mathematics uh, uh, in, in the university as a part of Bachelor of Science. So right. my father, like, his, his, his understanding, like, engineering needs a lot of time to study. And right. Bachelor of Science doesn't need so much of time to study. Okay. So his idea was, like, Yogi, you, you are going to have a lot of spare time. <laughs> so you have yeah. to you have to invest your time in studying something else. So mm -hmm. I I took up one IT program, and uh -huh. then he said you are good at languages. You are not getting it, so you should learn languages. So okay. uh, 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 fortunately, in my university in Western India, there is a national uh, rather than national the pub there is a public university called as Pune University P U N E. Right. Sure. And so uh, the, uh, that that university has a uh, has a foreign languages department. So okay. uh, uh, we just went there and uh, actually we were just walking by from there and we saw that there is this big queue and my, my father said, okay, let's go. What What's happening there? Let's see. <laughs> yeah. so we came there and then people were standing in a queue for admissions to the foreign right. language department. Uh -huh. So then we saw, we asked, what are the languages that one can study? So on the, on the board, there were exactly those four Flyers were there, one yeah. for Russian, one for German, uh, one for French, and one for Japanese. So okay, yeah. my dad said, okay, what would you like to study? I said, maybe I'll continue with German because uh, I'm in there. He said, oh, no, that's so boring. Uh, see this see this language. It's so funny. It's like snakes. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you study that? So I said, <laughs> Okay, Dad. If you say so, I'll study. And that that was just a casual kind of thing. Right. And yeah. I started learning Japanese language. <laughs> and, and that and that so, one that one casual decision affected the rest of your life. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly speaking, if I go back into the memories I have from those times, mm -hmm. we had no connection with Japan. Right. Whatever today people speak about India Japan relationship, mm -hmm. I remember like in my. Uh, eighth year of my school there was just half a page of thing about japan and right. i remember i had seen some 
kanji characters in there was a picture and some text and that's the only thing i knew about japan mm -hmm. and nothing more than that so yeah. uh, i think it was a sheer luck or mm -hmm. destiny <laughs> destiny <laughs> yeah we landed up there we landed yeah. up there and we chose japanese language okay yeah that's interesting because i think you you did an, in another youtube video you talked a little bit more detail about the steps from uh, the speech contest that you won and then into the IT world or academic world and then to the IT yeah. world and then finally into politics. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was a fascinating story, but that was the one thing I couldn't catch from that interview was <laughs> the origin story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, from there, like the Japanese language program started and it was a three year program. Yeah. And, uh, the, the teachers were nice, like the Indian teachers, not Japanese mm -hmm. teacher. Sure. The teachers mm -hmm. were nice and the pronunciations were good and they really made us write the letters. Mm -hmm. And I think um, I have, I can write beautiful Japanese letters. Yeah. Um, and from there on, like winning quiz contest and then topping the uh, JLPT, the Japanese language proficiency test exams, mm -hmm. and then also participating in the speech contest and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it was not just about the language, but also so much of interaction and mm. extracurricular things going on into the department of Japanese language, mm. which which really actually uh, got me into the act. Uh, yeah, I, I really started enjoying the language, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, by the time I was a third year student, I I in fact became a teacher in the university, which which was beyond the rules of the university. So. I yeah. think I I really caught hold of the language quite well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was interesting. You were talking about um, the complicated or sometimes conflicting relationship with your professors or colleagues in universities, how they may have been advocating for you in some points in time, but at other moments they were sort of uh, uh, against you or... Yeah, blocking yeah, your progression yeah. forward for whatever reason um so it's it's a complicated uh you know politics i'm sure is similar right where people might japanese custom is to smile at it on the front of their face but hide their true feelings so sometimes you don't know um uh, how they actually feel towards you it must be quite difficult to navigate that um yeah, as yeah. foreign in, in foreigner in in Japanese politics I wonder if you could talk about maybe advantages for you as a foreigner uh, because you have um, a different way or unique way of thinking compared to Japanese politicians but uh, also some disadvantages as well in doing that job right right um see um, a Japanese politician has his own uh, trait because at the end of it they are taught in the same school <laughs> so yeah. so it's first of all it's even if they are politicians they have to follow the customaries and rules written rules plus the unwritten rules and which they will keep on following sure that's, that's number one number mm -hmm. two is uh the background uh, the educational background as well as the work experience that we carry mm -hmm. uh i think very few politicians in japan they carry a, 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 a educational background plus the work experience like i do and mm -hmm. particularly, I think I I I have gathered a versatile uh, kind of experience and and uh, educational background, mm -hmm. uh, like multiple languages, IT, uh, science, languages, mm -hmm. economics, uh, and uh, uh, I have worked in IT, manufacturing, uh, banking. I also understand other industries like retail and insurance. So sure. so knowledge of the working knowledge of all these things it's not just bookish knowledge of yeah. course i have hundreds of books on technology mm -hmm. as well as business and mm -hmm. then i have traveled to so many countries around the world uh, yeah. for work uh, so i think i have an understanding of uh, how things work out there mm -hmm. uh, yeah so uh, when i when i uh, sit into the assembly uh, when a particular uh, problem is being discussed i think the biggest difference that comes out is that most of the Japanese guys, they tend to think in a linear fashion, mm -hmm. the, the same linear fashion. They will have 
uh, same way of thinking about the problem. But yeah. for me, since I have been in the industry for a long while, uh, immediately there is an image that that starts building up in front of my eyes. I don't even need to write it in my on a paper, but yeah. I immediately start building a, a two-dimensional image mm. to see, okay, who are the characters or the stakeholders concerned to this problem? Mm -hmm. And what could be the different aspects of this problem, uh, which I have to think like stakeholders versus the aspects. And then I, I can start thinking in detail where yeah. exactly and how exactly is the problem shaping up. Mm. So yes. uh, yeah, that's that's probably one of the biggest difference I have seen when I when mm. I have uh, debated on an issue in, in the assembly. Uh, right. in, in in Japanese assemblies, it's like if they have an issue, they will just consider a very small portion of it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's the end of it. That doesn't that doesn't solve the problem itself. The that, big picture. That, yeah. The big picture. So the big picture is so missing so many times, and that's that's mm -hmm. one big difference I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, other topics that I am interested in is, you know, how foreigners in Japan can achieve their full potential. Um, some of my videos, sadly, are that a lot of people come to Japan expecting to build a long-term career when, in fact, um, they find there are glass ceilings or other limitations. Um, but on the other hand, I have some other friends, especially entrepreneurial ones that started their own businesses and things like that, where there are few limitations, uh, except perhaps business. If you want to get a bank loan, there might be a little bit more complicated process for that sort of thing uh, or investors. But uh, if you're building your own business, you have a lot more freedom to do the way that you want to do and sort of, you know, money is king. If you make money, then that's the end of it, right? Um, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but in uh, organizations, there can be limitations uh, for for graduate students or people who, um, like yourself, you graduated with, you know, uh, a master's or a PhD. I'm not sure exactly, but a lot of scientists are graduating from universities or young people are building their careers here. Um, I wonder what kind of advice you would have for foreigners, young foreigners, perhaps that are planning to stay in Japan long term and how they can um, achieve uh, their full potential. Great, great. Uh, I will have advice for both the sides, the foreigners as well as the Japanese side as well. Yeah. I'll begin mm -hmm. with the foreigners. See, uh, if, if you see the foreigners who are already settled in Japan, there are foreigners who have come to Japan like me, uh, pre-prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, so... And there are others who have come uh, with, uh, with zero preparation, kind of, with zero mm -hmm. uh, knowledge of language or zero knowledge of how Japanese people think or they work. So those kind of people are also there. Yeah. Uh, well, for, for me also, I, I probably uh, came prepared with the language and some part of the culture, but not exactly the working process or the thought process of the Japanese. So mm. uh, that I, of course, I learned in Japan while working with the Japanese people. But uh, if we have to make this model uh, uh, really working and happily working, uh, it's not just like, okay, I came here, I had no language background, I had no cultural background, but I came here, I did my business, I made so many, and I'm successful. But, uh, you know, that's, that's not the end of it, because that is not uh, making the whole story of immigration a successful story here. Right. Um, mm. So from that perspective, I think uh, for the foreigners, if they have to really make the best out of it, uh, of course, before coming to Japan, understanding the uh, Japanese language and culture, mm -hmm. uh, uh, also the business culture to some extent is very much important. Uh, another yeah. thing is they they should come here with a with a with a uh, with the understanding that this culture is is quite different from what from the cultures in uh, in other countries. Uh, yeah. Even the day to day etiquettes are so different. So. Mm. Uh, uh, people when they come here, they will have to. Maybe some people think that it's a, it's a compromise, and they don't want to compromise. That since they are living here, just follow the rules here. It's not like that. See, when you come to this country, whatever is good for all of us, we have to learn that, and uh, we have to build on that. Right. Uh, if you think something is not really good, then of course you may not. You don't need to do it. But mm. there are so many good things in this culture. We we there we can actually pick up so many things and learn from it. Mm. Now, uh, that's that's you know I think where we have to start from, uh, yeah. At least the foreigners and mm -hmm. I see so many people they are like just 
uh, what you say, uh, 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 I'm not getting the right word, but they're yeah. very hard that they, they will not learn the language. And right. uh, yeah, and so I, I can understand, okay, if you are a vegetarian and you don't need, want to become a vegetarian, uh, I can understand, no problem. Sure. But yeah. there is no, no harm in learning the language. There right. is uh, no no harm in uh, learning a few of the etiquettes or manners of the Japanese society. That's um, right. Yeah, that's very important. Uh, uh, one more thing, what I feel is like, particularly from the immigrant community sense, uh, people come here, they experience life, and they are not actually uh, disseminating that experience to the other people or to the newcomers in this society. Right. Very less is written about the life in Japan. Mm. Very less. And right. we need to actually create uh, th those kind of data sources. We together. Mm -hmm. In yeah. fact, right now, uh, no such immigrant effort, uh, 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 what you can say, uh, uh, structured effort is happening in which yeah. such kind of information or help kind of be created for, for people coming in Japan. Mm. But mm -hmm. I think it has to happen sometime. Uh, yeah, I have started it as a part of All Japan Association of Indians. We have a website. We have yeah. started putting in information in a structured what's manner. The, what's the uh, website uh, name? Uh, www.ajai-indians.org. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. okay. I'm also talking to some other organizations. Like mm -hmm. if we can actually make this site a multilingual and we can make it like available for other people also. Like okay. say, very commonly, very common issues. Uh, uh, water water flowing happened and it went to the house down Below. floor. And, yeah. and then the foreigner staying the in the above floor, he thinks, oh, I, I'm not the culprit. The <laughs> right. is the culprit because it is not waterproof. So <laughs> yeah. the, the, whole, the, the whole difference is when we are living in India or China or in the US, normally houses don't have wooden floorings. Even yeah. in Japan, even concrete, huge buildings, they have a wooden flooring in between. They don't right. have the floorings in between. So what yeah. just goes down kind of. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't happen overseas. So like people like me who have lived here for a long time, we now know it. But yeah. many people who have come here, they don't know it. Mm -hmm. Even right. like people walking inside their home, they will be walking like with very heavy steps and the sound <laughs> yeah. will be heard downside. But yeah, it's incredible the number of uh, posts on TikTok I see foreigners receiving angry notes on their door yeah. from their downstairs Japanese neighbor yes. or, or <laughs> Japanese neighbor where, you know, go home, dirty guy Jin or, so, or uh, you know, exactly, like exactly. super angry note to say, you know, we don't need you here anymore because you, your footsteps are too noisy. Right, and then right. the foreigner thinks, well, that's such a silly thing to be worried about. But for them, it's a really important. Issue. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's a misunderstanding. For for them, life for for the Japanese life is calculated. Yes. And if if something goes beyond the calculation, then there is someone who immediately comes there, bows his head, says sorry, and tries to co correct yeah. that mistake. That mm -hmm. is how uh, their life is. It's simple like that. But yes. uh, in case of an immigrant, the immigrant will ask questions: Why me? Who is the actual troublemaker? I'm not <laughs> going to go down. So right. yeah. The immigrant is right from his perspective, but mm -hmm. uh, that is now how things are happening on this side. So yeah, uh, I have been like uh, I have been uh, like training people on these kind of aspects for so many years, but yeah. uh, it's not possible for uh, a few people or a few mascots to to actually train the whole uh, immigrant community. So, mm. so we'll have to we'll have to actually have a structured kind of networked mm. kind of effort between yeah. all, all the immigrant communities from different countries. Uh, so that that's for the foreigners. Yeah. And uh, for, for the Japanese, like, as you said, like people mm. will come and paste on the door, get out kind of things. Now, yeah. that is one problem with the Japanese. See, what what I believe is that uh, Japanese people, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use this very damn strong words that Japanese people are not smart. They, they are not smart enough to go and speak to a, uh, a foreigner mm -hmm. and say that there is a problem and right. and the problem has to be uh, resolved and this could be the way to do it so they, right. they don't understand how to communicate with the foreigners right uh, and, and they will very proudly say that oh we are shimaguni people we are islanders 
and mm-hmm. we actually don't know how to communicate but mm-hmm. it cannot go on because yeah. the former population is is going to increase and uh, the communication has to happen both mm-hmm. ways uh, yeah. if if the foreigner is doing something wrong you shouldn't get angry at the first first thing but you have to give an opportunity you have to explain what's going wrong how mm-hmm. how that can be corrected uh, yeah. like say even if like uh, on an escalator if you are if you are standing on the right side somebody <laughs> will come and do just they will, they will just like chuckle yeah. so you know that yeah. doesn't tell the the immigrant what what what's wrong they don't yeah. know what yeah <laughs> what's, what's in, wrong in that? osaka is the opposite uh, side exactly. as well so you, you... exactly <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. rather than the chuckling i think if if somebody can tell you don't stand on the right side in mm-hmm. in 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 tokyo except for osaka we stand on the left side so yeah. somebody has to like uh, communicate now the, the 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 problem there is language is a problem confidence mm-hmm. is a problem plus the language is a problem so right. uh, uh, people like when they see the foreigner their their first thing is like okay this guy doesn't speak japanese mm-hmm. <laughs> but then yeah. i think rather than chuckling the third thing is there should be some emotional uh, yeah. aspect to it like mm-hmm. you be compassionate like uh, okay this person may not be knowing that mm-hmm. the rule and i i i i should be actually telling him the rule so yeah. uh, i think that one thing uh, on on same thing goes on the corporate side as well i see like yes. so many people mm-hmm. come to uh, work here Uh, they are not uh, told the rules properly they are not told how the working style is they are not told that they cannot be 5 minutes late <laughs> yeah so yeah people like foreigners they tend to go 5 minutes 10 minutes late they don't care because mm-hmm. but then the Jap- some japanese guy in the company will be taking note of it and then yeah. after half a month he will explode like a bomb oh yeah. man you don't even follow time blah 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 i'm so- not aware completely <laughs> unaware that 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 anger is building up in the other person exactly exactly yeah. so yeah. Uh, even in corporates i think there has to be formal trainings mm-hmm. uh, when i used to work for a, a major japanese bank i started this kind of intercultural training in the bank and i plotted graphs how different are indians and japanese how different are right. indians uh, so japanese and the chinese and yes people really started looking at it on a scale mm-hmm. uh, how how different one one like one to 10 scale when mm-hmm. they started looking on the scale then people realized oh that's the real difference so we can subjectively mm-hmm. keep talking many things <laughs> right but when, when a... we objectively see at things then we realize oh that's the difference that that big is the difference <laughs> <laughs> as an it recruiter i, I recruit uh, it candidates in japan and uh, i've spoken with many uh, it project managers indian it project managers and japanese as well and one difference is that um let's imagine two people with exactly the same level of english speaking ability or let's say java coding ability or python and you ask yeah. both people now both are exactly the same level in reality yeah. you ask the japanese can can you do this and they will say i'm ah, not not so well not so well you ask the indian yeah. can yeah. you do this and they will say absolutely i can absolutely it's yes. absolutely no problem in reality they have the same ability but the their answers and their the way that they present themselves as completely different right <laughs> exactly i think the indian mentality is let's try doing it sure and yeah. the japanese mentality is if i don't know it right then i'm not going to even mm-hmm. try it right. so so i i actually uh, got just pulled up a slide to show you okay like uh, this is a simpler version okay yeah that's cool yeah so this is how like mm-hmm. if it's communication like the japanese they are so indirect and close in communication yeah. whereas indian will be actually much more direct and open yeah yeah they means self consciousness japanese mm-hmm. will be more group centric mm-hmm. their their decisions will be consensus based where indian will also not try to break so much but still they will make their own try to make their own decisions and kind of move on right and then what we were talking about was about <laughs> the see this is what i was talking about like Yeah. the person effort will have to happen mm-hmm. the government effort will have to happen and also the community effort will have to happen uh, to actually uh, make this society a better society inclusive of the immigrants yeah so uh, 
yeah like as foreigners come they will also have to learn the language they will also have to learn the daily etiquettes mm -hmm. they will also have to try to make local friends just not keep stay to themselves kind of that's enjoy right festivals enjoy travel mm -hmm. so th these things they will have to do many foreigners in fact forget to give co-curricular education to their kids once they come to japan because they will send them to international schools with hefty fees and then they don't want to do anything else so right. yeah, yeah. That's also a problem. From the mm. government side, I think mm. the whole uh, policy is so confused. So yeah. we'll have to work on it, I think. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, that's right. Not not the immigration policy, but policy for immigrants that are already in Japan. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but think, things are not working there. And plus, mm. uh, until now, see, the, the, the immigration gates of Japan were so closed. And yes. now suddenly they have opened the gates in last few years. Now they have uh, like uh, uh, they have reduced the barrier for the people. They are in they are in uh, taking in more labor kind of people, and there is no system to actually support these guys. And the, these right. guys who are not so educated, they don't know the language, they don't know the culture, they don't know mm. even how to use a Western toilet. They are going right. into the uh, the countryside of Japan, working for farmers, working for business units, mm. working for whatnot. And mm. they don't understand anything and they can't even understand anything of this country. And there are so many problems. Yeah. So if, if Japan is changing uh, the way they uh, like uh, changing the, the, the rules of the game, I think mm. they also need to change so many other aspects which are concerned. Uh, mm -hmm. with, with the issue of the immigrants. Yeah, that's an important... I think a lot of foreigners like to talk about how Japanese people don't uh, make an effort to understand foreign cultures, but uh, there's very little sort of mentioned about how we can make a personal effort as well. Um, and as you say, reach out, make a local friends, take it, make an effort. If you can't become fluent in Japanese because of sort of some... Uh, lack of uh, language ability. Um, at least you, you you can learn some, and you can learn the cultural aspects and things like that. So exactly, uh, important exactly. as well. Yeah. Uh, from from the language perspective, recently, uh, Hello Work or uh, 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 what is that organization? Mm -hmm. uh, Jaso. They are given some uh, free Japanese language programs, but otherwise, yeah. if you feel like uh, in those cities where they have. A bigger uh, immigrant population. They are doing Japanese language programs. They are offering Japanese language pro programs on on voluntary basis, yeah. and there will be uh, tens and hundreds of volunteers which will be involved. And they just are running these classes for probably their own sake, uh, mm -hmm. they, at their own pace. And mm -hmm. many immigrants uh, don't enjoy these uh, language classes. So if yeah. the cities have to do something. Uh, mm. maybe I think they have to do something in an integrated manner because yeah. e even on this voluntary effort there is a lot of spending at least in my city I will tell you like uh, for the voluntary organization in my city Edogawa they spend around 400,000 US dollars but uh, I don't see uh, an output that is coming uh, like uh, output of the same intensity of 400,000 US dollars yeah so, it's a lot of yeah. money yeah so uh, that that money is actually going waste, uh, mm. I think. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you with with that level of money, you could, you know, build a a culture center where foreigners can go. Let's say they can enjoy some entertainment there as well as cultural diversity sort of initiatives. Yeah. Maybe there's a sports gym, and maybe there's a, you know, some something to attract the foreigners to come. Uh, and then also along with that have Japanese volunteers who want to uh, interact with foreigners more and then language classes and whatnot. There's a lot you could do, I yeah. think. Exactly, exactly. So uh, as I was sh showing that framework right now, there are so, so many things that have to be done, mm. uh, but somehow those things are not moving. And uh, like politicians like me, we will have to, go on creating that awareness yeah. people like me and in fact not even just politicians those are into the uh, immigrant related voluntary kind of work they yeah. also have to go on creating that awareness 
uh, wherever possible, talk to the people, uh, give this kind of awareness. So I have I have spoken to almost I speak to every year I speak to almost fifty universities in Japan. Really, and wow. every time I realize that when I speaking to a new set of students, they have absolute no idea of what's happening on the ground in this country right. of their right. own. They sure. absolutely yeah. have no idea. They're not very engaged in po polit political discussions uh, at all, uh, I would say, uh, the young people of Japan. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. it, uh, as you know, like I'm right now a principal of a public school in Japan. Mm -hmm. And in my school, we actually uh, uh, support a lot of uh, problem-based uh, studies. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, problem-based learning, PBL, what they call so mm -hmm. people take up some problem and they write small thesis and they give presentations No, our, our students. And mm -hmm. uh, this year, a couple of uh, groups of students, they are studying about the immigrant community. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, it, it makes me worry. They started studying about the immigrant community around three, four months back. Mm -hmm. And they have not come to me, even asked me a question. I'm <laughs> sitting there in the school. And... <laughs> <laughs> who 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 they go and ask the questions is they go and meet some city officer right. and they go and meet somebody. So, you know, they have not understood that they have to go to the stakeholders to understand <laughs> yeah. the, the exact what you can say, uh, the, uh, yeah. uh, the reality of the issue. So, sure. uh, 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 you, you know, that, that is where they lie. If you mm. see the government uh, 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 like the committees they form, uh, mm -hmm. committees for immigrant work. Uh, there is a committee in the central government and uh, almost every prefecture has some community. And if right. you see the members of these communities, uh, they will just have the Japanese professors. There mm -hmm. is no foreigner in these communities sure. who, who can actually talk about the real, the, the ground reality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, the, and I think that's the problem because these professors, they, uh, they wrote some thesis sometime they went mm -hmm. to few people uh, mm -hmm. i'm not sure they, they even went to the right people or not yeah they gathered some knowledge and they wrote their thesis maybe a lot of pre-assumption kind of things into the thesis and they think they understand the immigrant society <laughs> that, that's the issue i think right one of the uh other things i was curious about and probably you you would know a little bit about this i read an article uh about a month ago and I can't remember the name of the uh, the politician or the yeah. uh, the it was a it was a lawsuit to the Japanese government about a Korean-born Japanese citizen that was not able to be um, promoted to a senior principal position or uh, a position of authority, and apparently in politics or got, like national politics and any kind of government agency it's illegal according to the constitution i might be wrong please correct me it's illegal in the constitution of japan that a foreigner can hold high office in japan is that correct and if so what are the rules around that uh it will depend on the the nationality mm -hmm. uh, so first of all uh, one will have to have a japanese nationality to be considered yeah. for that yeah uh, yeah uh, so I'm not sure the, whether the person had the uh, the uh, the Japanese nationality, uh, mm -hmm. particularly with the uh, second generation or the third generation Koreans. The issue mm -hmm. is that uh, in the past, for a while, uh, maybe their father or themselves, they were given the Japanese nationality and, and it was revoked. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result, they don't have the Japanese nationality, but they have a special long-term resident status. Yeah. And uh, uh, particularly in, in, in the case of uh, the second generation, third generation Eiju, Korean. Eiju can, right? The, 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 Eiju can, they have. So, right. uh, so uh, uh, they actually give, like, keep fighting these kind of cases. Mm. The, 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 the main point is they want the Japanese government to revoke their, uh, their citizenship. Because right, otherwise, right. they're just hanging there. They, they mm. can either go back to their countries and be a normal citizen there, mm. uh, nor they can stay in Japan and be a normal citizen here. So uh, right now I have become, I'm, I'm the first foreigner to become a principal of a public school. 
in Japan. Right. First mm. foreign, not foreigner, foreign origin person. Now I'm a Japanese You're a citizen. Japanese citizen now, citizen. but yeah. foreign born. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Now, uh, my... Uh, Was there an opposition? Like you must have uh, faced some uh, silent yeah. uh, opposition that probably people wouldn't say it to your face, but silently people may have been trying to block your nomination to become a principal of a school. I'm imagining, is that the case or what do you... How was that process to become a principal? Yeah, um, uh, 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 of course, not everything comes out uh, to to like to, to the surface. But uh, mm. my, uh, my nomination, like uh, last year, three of us were nominated to the principal position. Only I, I am from a foreign origin. The yeah. other two guys are normal Japanese guys. Mm -hmm. But uh, first, first of all, our nominations came directly from the governor. governor. So right. the governor himself actually interviewed us and uh, we were selected through the whole process. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there could have been some some uh, friction behind the screens, uh, sure. but but uh, that that was not actually, I, I couldn't see it or mm -hmm. I couldn't feel it. Uh, for me, uh, I was just told that my nomination has been done and then after that, it was a, a, a just the, op, the operational process or... Yeah. For, for the joining thing now uh, when i joined the school uh definitely uh, uh it's not a very smooth journey some teachers definitely i feel like they mm. have this oh, why this guy has suddenly come here kind of yeah uh, so over the time as uh, i'm interacting with them and uh, over the time as uh, i'm showing them that i can i think some things very in an interesting fashion or i do have a lot of knowledge i do have a lot of experience when people are able to see that then some teachers are uh, getting more friendlier uh, to me mm -hmm. otherwise i feel like many uh, teachers are hiding information uh, right. um, in fact if there are some special training or special lectures that are being or some meeting with the students are being organized in the school and uh, even though i will tell them that do call me when when it happens uh, mm. they will they will try to uh, not offer that information to me beforehand so sure. i i have experienced those kind of things in the school yeah. but uh, i think i think i'll be able to handle it over time yeah. mm -hmm. i'll be able to handle it in the sense mm. uh, uh, i will convince them through my work <laughs> yes yeah yeah it, it's about building trust i think and uh you know it takes time um, any any organization or government or whatever that gets a new leader, there's there's a little bit of apprehension or exactly. nervousness among the the people that you would be uh, leading. So that's exactly. natural. Exactly. But I'm and glad to hear that there wasn't any overt like uh, racist attacks or anything like that uh, during that process because uh, you know there could in my not mind yet, not yet. But if somebody does that, I'll it will be very interesting. I'll just give it back like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah uh but uh not yet not yet no not not uh, if you go on the internet uh there is actually uh, one site made in japanese and it just talks about me it's a one yeah. web page kind of mm -hmm. and people people have really written nasty things there how okay can yeah. write, how in can the comment section on? probably right yeah how can a restaurant? How can we a restaurant owner become a principal of the school? And yeah. what these guys are expecting? So I, I am not responded there, but I think those people they just they are ignorant of my resume. Uh, yes. I think so. <laughs> they are absolutely, not absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the other the final thing I'd like to to cover is just about kids and family. Uh, I think you are married and you have you, you have children as well. Or I one? was married and I have one son. I was in the past. So okay. my my wife is a professor in China, and okay. uh, yeah, she she opted. She's the professor there in a national university. Okay, and um, um, she opted to stay there after the birth of my son. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah after our marriage we have not lived we didn't live actually together so long right just half a half an year well, so how about your son that, where where is he living in china my son right now he's in uk okay. uh, but uh, he was born and brought up in japan he was living with me ah uh, yeah. yeah yeah i thought i saw a post one on uh, perhaps your facebook page uh, with uh, 
you and him together. So it was quite nice. Yeah, to see. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, in fact, uh, uh, raising him here as a single father, uh, that was again one different experience and achievement for me. Mm. Because uh, in Japan, actually, you see so many people just cry about bringing up babies here. And I, I very bluntly tell people that it was a very wonderful process for me. Yeah. I, I'm a proud father that uh, I have never, ever, I didn't made, make my son cry. Right. I, I never ever make him cry. Yeah. So, yeah, that's so that is how, like, if you take care of a particular set of things, your kids yeah. are happy with you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good philosophy. And, uh, <laughs> How old is your boy now? He is 20 now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Quite big. So he's a second year uh, international management student in Nottingham okay. University. Yeah. Uh -huh. But then like he is now there for six years in UK. Mm -hmm. uh, so until 14, he was here. And uh, thereafter, he moved to UK. But uh, now he quite openly says like uh, the, Jap the Japanese culture is so closed. And uh, people right. don't communicate here. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if they communicate, they don't communicate the truth. Uh, many yeah. of the times they are saying the opposite thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so he says like Japanese society is uh, uh, like he feels a tiring kind of in the Japanese society. Whereas in UK, yeah. things are very straight and people mm -hmm. actually you have your freedom, go and do your things. Mm -hmm. There is uh, what you can say, a uh, lot of diversity in the society. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh and that is how he is looking at it but fortunately mm -hmm. he keeps learning japanese language he can speak japanese mm -hmm. language well sure so i'm not sure whether he's coming back to japan or he's mm -hmm. going some other way but yeah that is one more problem i talk about in japan mm -hmm. and in, mm -hmm. during my lectures yeah. that uh, in japan so many foreigners are coming mm -hmm. but uh, those foreigners with a very strong academic background uh, and uh, those they don't choose to stay in Japan for a longer time. Yeah. Most of them, they go back or they go, go, go to some other country. Yeah. And most of the times, the kids of these guys, they are not staying in Japan because yeah. the kids of these people, they are, they are almost close to hundred percent. They are going to international schools Yeah. and from international schools. They are not going to the regular courses of that. The Japanese universities offer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they these kids normally fly out to somewhere if you see the indian community yeah. particularly the it community mm -hmm. most of our kids are going overseas after the after finishing the high school yeah. so uh you know uh, you you would know that word brain drain so mm -hmm. brains are draining from the uh from the uh, developing countries to the advanced countries yeah. uh, but i call this phenomenon of our kids going overseas as a reverse brain drain. drain. Right. It should right. be the opposite, right? It should be the best minds from third world countries should be wanting to come to Japan come and here. Yeah. out of here and even grow roots here and, and contribute to Japanese society. Exactly. Uh, it's not happening. Right. And I feel uh, like one, one of the, like the whole question of, okay, we already covered how foreigners need to, engage more in Jap Japanese culture and learn the language and so on. And I agree with all of that. But I also thinking about the problem of from a policy standpoint, from a government policy standpoint, what can Japanese do to open their minds to additional right to, to the world and, and learn from and I think it all starts from the education um, of small children. Yeah, yeah. Exposing can them you, to can, can you give me a minute? Yeah. I think my gas is on and I forgot to put it off. Sure. Go know. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you didn't burn burn something on it the didn't stove. Burn, but my chicken was boiling for an hour. Oh dear. <laughs> Is that is that butter chicken curry? I I, I wonder. Uh, no, we don't make butter chicken curry. Honestly speaking, <laughs> honestly speaking, we don't eat so much. It's it's just in those third world kitchens, kind of <laughs> fourth world maybe. <laughs> I know it's it's a it's it's one of those dishes that's not supposed to be the main dish. It's sort of like the day after. 
dish <laughs> that you make with the leftovers, but it's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> my my restaurant serves it. Anyway, yeah. yeah, so I'll, I'll come to your question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah, just on uh, educating and also like, you know, in the UK, I think uh, it's basically standard to have all students that graduate from high school uh, spend a year abroad as part of their education and then start first year high university uh, a year later than normal. In Japan, that's almost career suicide to to go to spend a year abroad and come back. Um, a lot of there's a that's looked down upon in Japanese society, right? If you have a gap here exactly see Bob, uh, I, I think that's the overall the Asian mentality that they want they don't want to lose a year of their life mm -hmm. it will be the same in China same in uh, India yeah. so in Asian mentality is like that that we don't want to lose one year of our life and mm -hmm. just quickly quickly graduate and start earning and then support yeah. your family that's mm -hmm. that's the whole thing if, while people talk about the bigger GDP of Japan and uh, bigger per capita income of Japan, but mm -hmm. if you see the rea the ground reality, the the capital income is not really big. Uh, here, right. like Jap Japanese people, they are like cutthroat kind of uh, mm -hmm. how much I earn this month and how much I spend this month. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, at work, their companies are have until now the companies created a a, a life cycle for them, mm -hmm. a saving cycle for them. And while they will spend their whole life, 35 years, cutthroat economically, uh, at the end of when they retire from the, from the, from the company, they mm -hmm. will have enough so that they spend a good life. So yeah. uh, I think that is how the, the life cycle has been built up for, for the Japanese in Japan. And yeah. uh, th that's why uh, they find it very difficult to take that decision to put that additional year off the track, go somewhere, right. experience something. Having mm -hmm. said that, uh, I un see another side of it that parents are oyabaka kind of. They are mm -hmm. ready to spend uh, some unnecessary thing for the kids. Like uh, from my school, next year, uh, a batch of 30 students will go to the US uh, for 10 days. And, mm -hmm. and they have to spend 700,000 Japanese yen for the 10 days trip. I I'm just like, what the fuck? I didn't even spend... Uh, 300,000 yen for my lifelong education whatever yeah. I have so many degrees I have and yeah. in, at, across countries and I have spent only 300,000 until today on my education and <laughs> yeah. these kids they are spending 700,000 for a 10 days trip to the US <laughs> yeah. it's, it, that's again a, a very contrastual, contrasting yeah. fact in the society and it's such a sheltered experience as well. Like those kids will all get on a bus. They'll go from place to place together without exactly. really having any personal risk or without really Nothing. having any concerns. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's different if they took some money, they stayed in youth hostels or, you know, they, uh, you know, bunked with, with, a, with a host family or, you know, having a real life experience, maybe working exactly. part time, you know, like for working holidays would be good as well. But exactly. it is such a colossal waste of money. The fun, the funny thing is when I saw the whole itinerary there, there, every single food was more than 8000 yen. Uh, so I called the uh, tour, tour company guy and I asked him, uh, I, I called the, 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 the teacher in charge and I said, why, why is it so expensive? What are you going to eat? Are you going to eat lobsters for every of you? Yeah, that's a steak dinner, basically. Yeah. Right? What What is it? So he says, uh, no, we are going to eat, uh, you know, very uh, safe, high quality uh, food so that our students do not fe feel like health problems while they're traveling. And that's the worst thing we want to avoid. I said, what? What are you talking? <laughs> So, so you know, it's 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 all f funny from that. The misunderstanding, right? Like expensive exactly. means safe. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean safe. <laughs> yeah. So from from the policy perspective, I hardly see that uh, any politician in Japan. Maybe the in bureaucratic mechanism, something is happening, but yeah. uh, I don't see any politician in Japan or a minister in Japan who actually talks about the immigrant community. Mm -hmm. who talks about why and how are they going to accept the immigrant community yeah. and how they are going to, why they had closed the gates for so many years mm -hmm. and why they are suddenly opening those. 
And in order to open those, how they are prepared or how they are preparing, nobody talks about it. Mm. So suddenly the gates have been opened and the, the, the floodgates for the problems have also been opened. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, first thing is that acceptance policy is, is not at all seen. Second yeah. thing is, see, you, you kept your gates closed for so many years. Now you feel that you are running short of the resources. Mm -hmm. So if can you tell us in which industry are you going short or in which part of the country are you going short? And people are just coming in. There is no work match. And mm. uh, and the immigrants are not really enjoying. So many immigrants are actually not enjoying or not not enjoying the work, not getting the right salary, yeah, and not getting the right treatment mm. at their workplaces. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that whole uh, model has not been built up or developed in right. order to accept more immigrants. And next to that, of course, when the immigrant is coming, his family would come, his kids will come. So. Mm -hmm. What what kind of education are you offering uh, for the kids? So you have yeah. to think about it. Now, yeah. if you see in Japan, like they have schools, uh, specially uh, like uh, built up or uh, specially designated for those kids, those Japanese kids who go overseas with their parents yeah. for a few years and they come back mm -hmm. to Japan. So mm -hmm. the Japanese government have taken care for the education of these kind of kids because. Yeah. When they come back, they are not able to get into the normal Japanese school, get back in, into the same system kind of. Yeah. So another system for the Kikokshijo kids have been mm. built up. Now, mm. if you understand that there is such need for the Kikokshijo kids, why don't you understand that there is a need for the kids of the immigrants? That's right. Mm. Yeah. So no, nobody talks about that need. Nobody wants to build schools for these kind of kids, the immigrant kids. Mm. So basically, yeah. what what exactly are you wanting to? So mm -hmm. I was talking to one of the superintendent, and uh, I said, like, you know, uh, the immigrant kids they go to international schools. They don't have a place to play after the school. So can we open up some playgrounds, school playgrounds for the local community kids to play there? He says, if the kids want to play so much, then ask them to join the Japanese school. Yeah. So bloody, that's that's the answer. So if mm. they join the Japanese school, then they have the playgrounds to play. If they don't yeah. want the Japanese to join Japanese school, then they don't have the playgrounds to play. Mm. So you know, so all in all, you are actually not creating a playground <laughs> right. for for the whole immigrant community. So you have to create that playground where you know a, a real good yeah. game can be played, and it will be good for Japan. It's, That's right. It's, it's good for uh, for a foreigner. It will work mm. for only his work life, or maybe whatever five years, ten years. He is working in Japan, but his work is something on which you are going to lay the basis of maybe mm. an office, maybe a company, maybe sure. a good idea, maybe yeah. a good product. Mm. So yeah, it's not just about his work and his salary. It's yeah. about his contribution to your economy in, in, in a bigger picture. So no, no, nobody thinks about it. Nobody thinks about yeah. it. I, I just don't feel like that. I mean, you look at Elon Musk, uh, you look at uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you look at uh, uh, the guys who started Google, I forgot their names, Sergey and something, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. a lot of US um, monster top, you know, Dow Jones 30 companies, monster tech companies and otherwise were built by immigrants. Exactly. And, exactly. and the US is proud of that and same in Canada as well. Uh, hang on one second. keeps going uh um if japan could sort of take pride in how they nurture ideas from all you know especially foreigners who have new ideas they come in they see something that's a little bit different they think wow we could use that in our home country or exactly we could use something from my home country in japan would go over really well you exactly. know like so many things i see in japan every day i'm thinking that would be popular in my hometown i know it <laughs> you know so you know, those kind of export companies could be built and uh, lots of great, great organizations, but they need the, uh, they need encouragement support and, uh, and what from the government level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, overall, uh, I, I, I feel like now I have so much of opportunity to interact with the high school student 
with the junior high school yeah. students i feel like they don't understand the reality of where japan stands today yeah they absolutely don't have an idea that the self sufficiency in food of japan is hardly 36% which is mm -hmm. i think also bloated uh, right. because there will be so many other food stuff in which japan doesn't even have a self sufficiency of 36% right uh, so in order to buy the rest of the 64% of food japan really needs to keep on doing great research keep on right. doing building up new technologies Hmm. and selling them overseas yeah so a uh, japanese if you see they are normally not even able to negotiate mm. Mm. Uh, or at least negotiate happily normally yeah. if you see japanese companies they are in dictating terms mm -hmm. until now it has happened so because yeah. they have a specific technology at a specific price uh, which uh, until now they have successfully they have sold in overseas and they have made money to buy their food to buy mm -hmm. their gasoline mm -hmm. but if things continue like this and particularly if you see in the academic world the white papers coming out from japan have mm -hmm. they have lost the number against the chinese or the indians mm -hmm. last year now yeah. india publishes more white papers than than japan does right. and even in japan half of the white papers are written by the foreigners right Right. the non japanese students who come to japan mm -hmm. so i think this whole uh, changing picture is not being realized by by mm -hmm. by so many japanese people and yeah. they don't understand what and how they should be contributing mm -hmm. or why for immigrants are required here and yeah. what immigrants are going to contribute contribute mm -hmm. that whole picture is is not at all in front of their eyes absolutely and when when that understanding becomes clear and well if japan wants to change model yes japan should change the model J mm -hmm. japan should change their education japan yeah. should change their their population mix the working population mix mm -hmm. not just yes yes population but a population which is yeah. ready to uh, to 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 uh, invent more mm -hmm. which is ready to go overseas and uh, able to sell it to the overseas with yeah to go and stand against the competition from china or mm -hmm. other parts of the world mm -hmm. and if japan wants to build up that just yes, build it up but it's not going to happen tomorrow it's That's going right. to happen after at least one or two generations yes uh, when i say one generation i i normally say it as 15 years of schooling sure. so at least 30 years down the line 20 mm -hmm. to 30 years japan if japan wants to change the model but can japan change the model today i don't think so and and that's why people have to again realize that foreigners and japanese will have to make it together at yeah. least for today at least for next 20 years they will have to make it together that's right <laughs> yeah so in, in the last uh, few minutes I, i wonder if you you know maybe uh just promote your own activities uh i know you're involved in some charities you uh You may have some shout outs for your cultural center or other things that I'm going to put links uh, in the description. Um, so what kind of uh, organizations would you like to shout out that you're involved in? And I can I can link that. You, maybe you can send me a list after by email so I can make sure I get it accurate. Great, great. Sure, sure. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll go one by one first. Okay. Most important thing is I do this uh, trainings on immigration, society, inclusion, diversity. Uh -huh. and i do it to universities uh, then to ministries then to corporates and anybody is interested they can they should get in touch with me that's okay. number one number okay. two as i said we have started this effort of uh, disseminating a great amount of information on life and mm -hmm. many other things on the uh, the all japan association of indians website okay. and uh, people should make uh, take benefit out of it and mm -hmm. i would also like to connect with other foreigner communities so that we can create maybe a similar website multilingual website which can yeah. be seen by uh, by anybody coming to japan that's okay. the second thing and third thing is more on a smaller scale which is about the cultural activities i, I do a lot of traditional music and dances and live shows yeah. uh, i run my own uh, edogawa india culture center okay. and a um, lot of programs happening there yoga language programs music music training 
all mm. these kind of things happening so if anybody interested can definitely come and visit us all right fantastic yeah. and what does the future and, uh, hold for you one, one, oh one yeah go ahead thing, one, yeah, more one more thing i would like to add up is like uh um as i have become the first foreign origin uh, principal of a public school in japan uh, i think there's a lot of expectation out of me so anybody who is interested in academics and education and uh, they have some ideas about changing uh, the ways of japanese education doing something different something new or maybe they want to participate as lecturer or something people mm-hmm. i request people to just join me i need need help i need right. help from anybody yeah <laughs> how how should they how should they contact you so uh, you, you you can show up an email there right yeah i can i can yeah, show and i yeah. i will put it uh, in a description as well great great so that they can just write an email to me yeah a n k japan 2020 at gmail.com okay i'll yeah. uh, put that link in and yeah. last question uh, what's the future hold for you let's assume assuming that uh, you know five or so years in the future are you going to continue more in the political side of things or are you going to maybe move in the future towards nonprofit or what do you or academics maybe or what do you think right um uh, i think there are three three ways to do uh, do the uh, to continue the work uh, one is to uh, from the political perspective another is from the voluntary perspective and a third thing is from the bureaucratic perspective so mm-hmm. i wore the political hat and what i felt is that the bureaucratic mechanism in japan is quite strong the whole mm-hmm. of budget how the proposing the budget and using the budget that power lies with the bureaucratic wing and that's yeah. why i made this one of the biggest decisions i knew that there will be a lot of limitation on my activities mm-hmm. but still i took this very hard decision in my life to take up this principal position because mm-hmm. i wanted to see the bureaucratic side of the things so yeah. uh, i'll take some time to decide whether in future uh, i'll uh, go into i will like uh, uh, take the political role or i want to take some bureaucratic role and bureaucratic role can also mean mayors or governors kind of thinking mm. about those those stages uh, also yeah. is uh, something i'm i i my i want to think about mm. and uh, while doing that n- n- no need to stop the voluntary work so voluntary side will always keep on going uh, i can yeah. help like whenever there is need uh, i'm ready to help i'm ready to work together with the people uh be it from any community or be it japanese uh i'm i'm there for so the, these these uh, are the three three options or avenues which yeah. uh, anybody will have not just sure. me yeah <laughs> and uh, yeah All and right. if anybody wants to uh, go into politics uh you, you see one thing like uh, last year my one hour interview was there on uh, tv tokyo yes. uh, and uh, uh in the end the the interviewer asked me Uh, what what do you think uh, you will be able to achieve in politics mm-hmm. so uh, assuming that uh, i i if i work i stay in politics for 20 years uh, uh, will i be able to make uh, policy changes is is a is a question right but one thing will definitely change is that the the perspective of people looking towards japan will change so if mm-hmm. you see the last times upper house elections in japan uh, there were more number of uh, foreign origin people mm-hmm. who who actually announced their candidature who ran mm-hmm. for the elections okay if now next year in april we'll have uh, country wide elections for the local assemblies and mm-hmm. you will see uh, more and more foreign origin people mm-hmm. running for the elections running running for the positions and i think that is what uh, the change uh, we will see in japan so many people have come to me uh, i have given them advice on mm-hmm. how to prepare what to do yeah uh, i yeah you, you will see that so many people will run for in origin people will run for elections next year i think you know from there that is the kick start to the to the process of change and the, as the number increases the uh, amount of what you can say uh uh not the change but uh, the impression the impression will become bigger and bigger that we need to think about the change right yeah 
yeah, it's it's a lot more difficult to throw an insult at a group of people when they're standing right beside you, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot yeah, of times yeah. when people are so outside of your world, you've never met them, you don't know them. There's some group of anonymous people overseas and you can't even pronounce their name. Yeah. Uh, it's very easy to throw insults or to just dismiss their ideas as as insignificant. But if you're standing in front of a group like that, it's much yeah. more difficult to say, I don't agree with you because yeah. I, you're stupid or something. You know, <laughs> it's very hard to say that directly to someone, right? So yeah. the more foreign-born assemblymen and politicians that we have just in the surrounding environment, I think it'll be a lot less uh, discriminatory or hateful rhetoric from, from people, exactly. a lot exactly. more acceptance of ideas and just being aware that, well, these people have a heart they have a brain they're also interested in making japan a better place to live you yeah. know so yeah. it's not us versus them it's like how can we all be included um even if i find on tiktok when i when i post a video some of my videos are about uh foreigners posting i was racially discriminated against on the train because no one would sit beside me or something like that right and then i will post a sort of a bit a video saying are you absolutely sure that that's the reason they didn't sit beside you? Because it might have been a different reason. And a exactly. lot of times I think exactly. people misunderstand. Uh, there's a miscommunication, misunderstanding between the groups, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Very <laughs> true. So, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we, we have to keep uh, thinking like that, ret retrospecting uh, an issue. Uh, yeah. And there could be multiple reasons. Yeah, of course, discrimination could be one reason, but mm -hmm. uh, the other reason could be actually lack of confidence. Yeah, that could be also a possible reason. And if that is the reason, then maybe the foreigner, the the immigrant might also have to give some signals that it's fine. You don't need <laughs> that special confidence to sit next to me. Right. <laughs> yeah, like it's very very subtle. But sometimes when you're sitting and your legs are kind of obstructing the next seat beside you and yeah, someone's yeah. approaching to yeah. bring your legs in to l allow them a space right sometimes that little tiny gesture is the yeah, signal to yeah. say go ahead and sit if you would like um and you've all we've all been in the, on the train and seen the opposite right some uh, old guy who uh, doesn't care about anybody just exactly. spreads their body even further because they really don't want anyone to sit there uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, that's a signal right from them nonverbal to say i, I don't want you right. sitting beside me and they might misunderstand that oh maybe they don't want me to sit there because they're behaving in a certain manner but uh <laughs> exactly exactly it it, yeah. it happens it happens mm. so yeah i i really uh admire you and i encourage you to uh you know i don't know whether pol pol political office is in your future or or if it's uh, in another area of uh, japanese life but Certainly, uh, if I can spread the word a little bit among the foreign community to support you, be aware of what you're doing, and uh, even exchange uh, positive, uh, pro productive, and you know, um, proactive solutions to improve uh, our world around us, I'm certainly be happy to uh, support you. Exactly. So just just off record, not for this thing, but uh, yeah, next year I'm not running for elections. Okay. So next year, I'll stay out of the elections. Uh, I'll continue with this principal position. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, see, I think that's also one uh, uh, best model to show that change can happen on the yeah. ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I I want to discuss about with the governor about setting up uh, international schools yeah. in, in Baraki at least, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, Japanese kids and immigrant kids can study together. Yeah, and maybe possibly residential schools, mm -hmm. but uh, government won't go into the residential schools. So maybe some private schools for that purpose, yeah. and uh, maybe after four years from now, uh, or uh, maybe I'll run for the for mayoral elections, mm -hmm. probably in somewhere in Tokyo or maybe in Ibaraki. Yeah, yeah, but when I see Ibaraki, I think. More than Tokyo, Ibaraki needs people like us mm. uh, to look at things from a different perspective. Other, other, otherwise, the countryside is is dying down. Yeah, it's really dying down. Mm. Things are yeah. um, really in bad shape there. It means I can only imagine. 
Yeah, please. I can, only, I can only imagine, you know, some of the, you know, heartbreaking stories that you are receiving from people that, that need your help or that, that want your help. And some, maybe you can't help everyone. Even me, I mean, I, I'm not really doing much. I'm just have a TikTok channel discussing <laughs> some of these issues. But even in the comments and direct messages, I get tons of people commenting to me. It's like, can you help me? Um, I'm working in a factory in the middle of nowhere and, and my hours are too long. And I, you know, there's a lot of uh, different stories that I never expected to learn. Uh, Filipino uh, healthcare uh, nurses or, or, you know, working in senior citizens homes, for example, in Japan and the politics that's going on inside there, some discrimination and other th issues that they're dealing with. You know, there's an awful lot of people that are enjoying Japan, also another group that's suffering. And, uh, you know, it, it's really uh, opened my eyes to uh, the bigger picture of uh, foreign life. In exactly. Japan. And many a times I feel like those immigrants who are enjoying Japan, they deny that there are others who are suffering Japan. Right. And those who are suffering Japan, they deny that there are others who are actually <laughs> enjoying Japan. So yeah. I think immigrant community also has to come to an understanding that mm. there are two faces to Japan. Yeah. There are two faces okay. to Japan, mm. and uh, the, the 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 dark face is really the worst face of Japan because some Japanese are really worst culprits, and yeah. they can do the worst things. Means one mm -hmm. health worker, she 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 always keeps telling me like she's mm -hmm. working uh, in this kaigo job, the mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? Uh, the uh, means health health service, and yeah. she says the the Japanese old guys whom she's actually serving, they, they, they will like stick her, their pennies to her when she's right. actually trying to help them. She right. says, bloody, those guys cannot go into the tub bath by themselves, but they're, they, they, they know that they can stick their pennies into her. So, right. yeah. But if what, what people think, what they do, actually, that is also another side of, they know that this girl is not going to actually say anything yeah. or she's not going to revolt. And yeah. then they just, they just feel, feel free to do anything what they want to do that's right and yeah I, I was in gumma last last month three days i stayed in a in a japanese kind of hotel for three days with mm. my students and i saw like other than the it was a very big hotel 300 mm. of us were staying in the hotel yeah so and still there were vacant rooms so uh i saw that only the owner was the japanese and the manager was japanese rest all working there were were immigrants Mm. And then I asked them, so, okay, what, what, how, how long hours are you working here? So they say, normally we start working five, five thirty in the morning and then until night, 11 o'clock or so, or maybe sometimes by 12 until 12, we are working and Gee. all the days of the weeks. And I said, okay, how much you are getting paid? They were not even getting paid 10 man yen, mm. not even, not even in today's terms, not even 600, $700. Yeah. So, you know that that's really pathetic. Which who Japanese works for that much of pay? Mm. Who? So I I think again like this uh, uh, this acceptance of immigrants is going into a completely wrong direction. Yeah, completely wrong direction. That's what right. what a few countries of the Europe has done and mm -hmm. basically labeled it uh, in front of the United Nations as as a voluntary works of accepting the refugees and accepting mm -hmm. the immigrant communities. Yeah, and they have done the same thing. <laughs> yeah, done the same thing, and, and and Japan is going on the same track. I think Mr. Abe mm. lost there. Mm. Mr. Abe really lost there because a policy yeah. should have been there, very a strict policy. Yes, yeah. yes, he was. Uh, uh, yeah, a very kind of right wing politician. Um, he did many many positive things, but also. Uh, a lot of things that uh, were quite controversial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I'd just like to to wrap it up. I know I've already spent a couple of hours with you, and uh, I think that'll be good for today. Perhaps we can have a, another yeah. meeting at some point in the future and uh, and and see what's what's up, what's new new things for you. Sure, sure, sure. Great. Yeah, yeah. let's keep in touch. Absolutely. Thanks for your yeah. time today, Yogi. I really appreciate it. You said you are into IT recruitments. Yeah, exactly. I'm an IT recruiter. So I, I work with uh, uh, mostly vendor, uh, software vendors like uh, mm -hmm. Salesforce or AWS. Mm -hmm. uh, 
those sorts of uh, organizations. I also have done a lot of work in the Indian outsourcing, so Tata, Infosys, Wipro, companies like that, Capgemini, uh, and others as well. So I worked on uh, you know IT project managers. So um, yeah, if you have any Indian IT project manager uh, junior friends or friends that that are looking for uh, opportunity, I'm a recruiter, so please introduce them sure, to me. Sure. I will try That's to help. That's why them. I asked you. So you yeah. do, do you do it as your independent firm, or you're working for some company? The company is called Exec Search Partners. So I work for I a, a company called Exec Search Partners. I, I, and, I've uh, heard about it. I think I have received mails a couple of times from the company. Sure. I think, sure. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you yourself would uh, certainly be a candidate. I'm sure that would be suitable <laughs> for some uh, senior director roles. I'm sure, but I don't. I don't know if you want to go back into uh, IT or not. <laughs> I, I I would like to like say this year the uh, uh, Japanese FSA or the central bank they changed uh, this rule that they need external directors, mm. and uh, so if if there are companies which need who need like external directors like me, I I, I can definitely help them. It mm. will be more of an advice or a patron kind of role. Yeah. Uh, of course, I, I cannot work full time because I'm a, I'm a bureaucrat now. So bureaucrat sure. has his own limitations, but I can get uh, approvals for uh, being on a role. If, if a company really needs my kind of person yeah. for, for something mm. different they want to do in the overseas, uh, sure. I can be a good guide or advisor kind of mm -hmm. thing. But otherwise, I, I so I, I'll send you like if there is anybody who asks me, people keep yeah. asking me. In in fact, right now also there are a couple of guys who are just pinching me, Yogi San, Yogi San, Yogi San. So mm -hmm. <laughs> right now, just now, my phone is here. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah, if there it's, is anybody, it's, I'll connect to you. It's also you know sometimes conflicting because I'm working for the clients that are looking for very select specific type of skill sets, and a lot of times yeah. I get contacted yeah. by people that don't match what I'm actually looking for. So I uh, I don't really do finding jobs for people. I do finding people for companies, job, uh, specific for searches job. and executive yeah. search. So, right. um, but it, certainly if if uh, I do have something, I'm very happy to help uh, people. I'm absolutely, uh, it's yeah. one of the best parts of being a recruiter is uh, having a direct impact on people's the lives. lives of people. Yeah, yeah <laughs> getting them better company, better career more money you know it's important yeah it's really fun exactly uh mm -hmm. in fact uh, uh um, in, in another slide i have written a model how the government and uh the private companies like yours uh, they yeah. can work together to to solve this uh immigrant issues where job matching mm -hmm. is not happening so yeah uh, i i have created i have written down a model where i have said like the government should create a job a a profile matching kind of system yeah where the the employers they put in like we create a kind of objective kind of some uh, uh, data table mm -hmm. uh, in which in which the employers they 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 tell what kind of people they want and then mm -hmm. the, the 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 recruiters or uh, or in fact even individual or maybe some uh, universities or schools they can put in the data of the of mm -hmm. the uh, uh, of the job seekers and yeah. then the systems matches it. And mm -hmm. once the matching is done, then the role of private recruiters or private training companies mm -hmm. is to is to train these people to come and mm -hmm. come on board in Japan and then mm -hmm. take care of their rest of their life cycle. Because yeah. uh, just giving them job doesn't end the story. Mm. That's and right. If you see in the past, like labor unions did uh, some amount of that kind of job. Mm. And uh, the companies themselves did some amount of that kind of job. Companies used to train people. Labor unions also used to train people. Or yeah. if you have a problem, you go to labor union, you discuss with them, labor union helps mm -hmm. you out. But if you see now, companies have stopped training their people. Many yeah. of the companies. Yeah. Uh, not those in Otemachi or there. Mm. But if you go otherwise, most of the companies have stopped training their people. Yeah. And, uh, and labor unions are not so much in action right now. That's so right. We, we need a new model for mm. at least for the for the immigrants to come and work in Japan and the Japanese mm -hmm. to be able to work with the immigrants. So yes. That model can be can work only with the government and the, the rather than I'll say public private so PPP model public private yeah, that's partnership model. Hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, it's just hey, where there there are so dirty and black HR companies 
who just yeah. bring them, take take thousands of dollars for from them for yeah. for introducing a job and just throw them somewhere in the pit and That's then right. bloody those guys are like their lives are fucked up yeah so that needs to stop mm. that needs to stop Re- real problem and right. and most of these mama papa shops these black dirty hr companies they are actually run by one two three japanese guys they just open their company and they are doing these kind of stuff that's right yeah yeah that's right yeah it's uh it's really a difficult area to regulate right because uh there are already so many uh, laws on the books uh, regarding uh, privacy and how to treat people but in reality uh, it's really uh, very very difficult to uh to to monitor and if you see the, if if we have to apply the 80 20 law 80 percent people don't care about others they just yeah. care about themselves i make my money i may make my life mm-hmm. particularly the lawyer community <laughs> yeah this, the police community for yeah. them it's just they make their life and rest all can go 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 to whatever go to mm-hmm. hell mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and there there will be 20 percent people who who will be actually worrying about the society about the other people about mm-hmm. being good about being mm-hmm. good to others so yeah 80 percent of community is going to the dogs uh, yeah <laughs> yeah that's, that's, yeah, that's the problem there, i think absolutely yeah so yeah, but that's part of part of recruiting, and uh, you know we try to navigate through all of that and support uh, people the best that we can. And uh, and it's it's really great that you have uh, you know these uh, nonprofit organizations and other sort of uh, vehicles to sort of make positive changes both on the foreign community and with Japanese uh, society as a whole. So I, I really that's great. Thank you, sir. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yep. So uh, yeah, if 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 there are uh, and I'll connect you to John. Yeah, please do. Yeah, John, I'd be interested to speak yeah. with him. I, 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 don't, I guess he's a little bit less uh, talkative than you, maybe, or more shy. I'm not sure. He, he doesn't do a lot of social media and whatnot. Or uh... Uh, actually, he doesn't speak so much Japanese. Okay, so uh-huh. that's why he's not so much on media. So whatever his wife can write for him, he puts it on media. Really? Otherwise, if you see his Facebook, it will be just some funny jokes. That's <laughs> okay. It nothing deep about it like any social problems or any problems in the city or in the assembly right so he, it's like from by his policy he doesn't want to see himself in a problem by not being yeah. able to speak japanese i see <laughs> by oh, opening okay. up a pandora box and then not being able to handle it so <laughs> but uh very interesting guy and he, he has single focus like he he, hmm. he believes that his city needs some external connects overseas connects yeah. And that is what he can build up. Otherwise, he doesn't go in so much into the local issues. Mm-hmm. So he's very clear about it. So okay. uh, a total different perspectives about working. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but nice guy. Uh, not, okay. not a kind of uh, problem guy or negative kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think yeah. he came to Japan as an ALT and then settled here, married to a Japanese wife. I see. Like mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, please do uh, connect us there. It would be uh, interesting to speak with him. Great. And but the another lady in Bolivia, she's like, she, her nose is like Pinocchio nose, and she feels like, I, either she feels too too self confident, or maybe the otherwise she's not at all confident, but she doesn't connect with us. She never yeah. responds to our messages. Mm-hmm. So, and she's a lucky assemblyman because her father is in her father in law is a was a city councilor, mm-hmm. and then he decided to move to the upper the Tokyo State Assembly. So yeah. he gave away his seat to her. So it's like whatever votes were going to him, those votes went to her. So she was never actually considered by the media as a target. So she has been never... Was like she being born in him. America? Uh, she was born, I think, in Latin America. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. She, she is from Bolivia. And uh, I see. Mm-hmm. quite educated lady she worked for un also for around mm-hmm. i think nine, 10 years she worked for un but mm-hmm. again she's she also doesn't speak japanese so uh, i think she's not so connected with the community or the community problems i see i don't think so i'm mm-hmm. not sure how to look at uh, people like her whether to be really contributing to the to the area of politics or to the lives of people mm-hmm. uh, maybe yeah. I, yeah I have just one one 
time it happened like she and myself were called in the same program as guest yeah but I, but i think uh, she didn't want to see me so she bunked the program and she didn't even tell the organizers that she's not coming right so we, we were waiting for 5 10 minutes and then she didn't come so we started the program <laughs> <laughs> a bit pathetic yeah. bit pathetic mm. anyway <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I I'm just learning about all of these characters now, so I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a new world. Yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing. But next year you'll have many more to interview, I think. All right, sounds good. Sounds good. Next, all next right. Year, well, thanks. Of... Yeah. Thanks again anyway. for your time today. I uh, really appreciate appreciate your time. And oh, thank uh, you so much. Just uh, again, reach out to me if if you have questions. Uh, perhaps supporting some of your Indian uh, friends or uh, uh, that may need support in IT field. And then sure. uh, sure. certainly I'll be following your posts on uh, social media and perhaps after a period of time, we can meet again and chat again. Great, sir, great. You you are connected to my Facebook page? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, I will double check if I actually sent you a okay. connection request, but I, I will do that. For for the page, uh, you it's just follow kind of thing, not not a connection. But okay. Facebook page is is the place where I post anything first. I uh, see, and I post anything there. Uh, right. Yeah. If, if on my personal Facebook page, I don't paste so many of my political things or other things. Sure. Mm -hmm. and LinkedIn also, I have to regulate myself because LinkedIn again is a total different league. Yeah. So uh, Facebook page is my the the central position where i'm active central yeah. thing where i'm active yeah okay i understand yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. oh great all right well, yeah. well have a great day thank you for joining me and uh and, so and uh, talk to you next time yes thank you so much nice talking right. to you you too bye -bye. all right bye-bye for watching the entire uh, video if you're just skipping skipping to the end that's fine as well uh, uh below you'll see some links to my tiktok channel uh, some links to uh, Yogi's uh, different political activities, his charities, his Edagawa, uh, uh, Edagawa Cultural Center. His email is in there as well, which he wanted me to share with you. So feel free to reach out to him if you have questions or you want to support him in any way. And I look forward to seeing you guys in, in the next one. Take care.